¿Ok? Good. Wow, full house. Nice. Feels good. <laughs> okay, uh, let's get started. So, so what? <laughs> yeah, hold on. I think I, I, I didn't. Well, anyway. So, welcome. Thank you for coming. Um, in this talk, I'm going to describe how I've been contributing to OpenStack for the last almost a year. And I did not install a single DevStack VM in that year. <laughs> uh, so, start telling you a little bit about myself. Uh, I've been working with Rackspace for a little bit over a year. Uh, on a couple things, uh, I contribute to OpenStack mostly the heat orchestration project, and I'm also in the team that uh, created uh, OpenStack Ansible, which is the project I'm going to talk about today. Uh, I do a little bit of contributions in other areas, Keystone Horizon. Uh, I am an O'Reilly author. I wrote the Flask book the one with the dog on the cover that you may have seen. Uh, so I, I tend to gravitate towards things that are uh, web development. That, that's, that's what I like, and I feel more uh, knowledgeable. And I have a blog also where I, I blog about Flask and web development and Python and that type of thing. So just to give you an idea, and if, 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 if you you think this is not interesting, you, you can just go find something else to do. Uh, I'm going to talk about the problems I have with uh, DevStack. I'm going to start with that. Uh, then I'm going to show you this, this project, OpenStack Ansible, give you a quick description. Uh, I'll tell you how to install it, which is very easy. Uh, I have a demonstration. And then in the end, I'm going to give you some uh, pros and cons. Uh, this isn't a project that you can use for every type of OpenStack upstream work. So I'm going to tell you what works and what doesn't. So it, it's not really you know, the, the, a, a full replacement for DevStack. If, if you were hoping for that, I'm sorry. OK, so what's, what's wrong with DevStack? Uh, there isn't much that's wrong, in my opinion. Uh, but a few things that bother me. So for starters, uh, when you install DevStack, it, it's an all or nothing distribution. You, you have to install, you have to select what you want, you get it installed, and that's it. Basically, if, if you need to change something, you have to start over, right? You have to unstack and then uh, you know, change the config and run the whole thing again. So you, you cannot mix and match. You cannot modify after you do an installation. Uh, you get everything installed in, uh, in in the same environment, which usually a VM or a cloud server. So all the projects share the dependencies. The basically, you have to make sure that everything is consistent. Uh, if you you're working on one of the projects, so you you update your requirements to match that process that that project uh, you know progressing, and that screws up everything else, right? So so you're forced to go and fix all the other projects. So a lot of problems. Uh, to some extent, I have to be fair, uh, recently DevStack added support for virtual environments, which alleviates some of these problems. Uh, so I, I should mention that I'm not sure how, how many people know about it, but you, you, you can set up virtual environments per project now, uh, which is it, it's a good step forward. I mean, you, you're still sharing packages at the OS level, though. Uh, so, so OpenStack Ansible. Uh, this used to be called OSAD, OpenStack Ansible Deployment. Uh, now that we were accepted into the Big Tent, we renamed it to OpenStack Ansible or OSA. Uh, it, it's all the same thing. It's just how things progress and tend to change very often. Um, I'm sure it'll be named differently for the next summit, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so in, uh, in one sentence, what this project is, it's just a set of Ansible playbooks that deploy OpenStack. So that, that, that's all we have. Uh, it, it's an initiative of Rackspace. Uh, we use it to uh, deploy our private cloud product. It's, it's built on top of this. Uh, but 
This is uh, completely vendor free. It, it installs in the same way as DevStack. It gets the sources out of the uh, the Git repositories and installs uh, a, uh, a pre uh, pre generic cloud. If if you uh, if you get it from this repository, OpenStack Ansible uh, on the OpenStack namespace. Uh, so we, we don't have anything that's Rackspace specific here. It, it's a pretty standard OpenStack. And the big difference between this and DevStack is that services are installed in LXC containers. Uh, so for, for some of you, if, if I say containers, you, you may think Docker. So LXC, it's, it, it's a different option, uh, which uh, some of us think that it, it's more powerful. Uh, when you create an LXC container, you get uh, like a VM. It's it's not uh, it's not an application container. It's basically a, uh, a VM where you can do whatever you want. You can start multiple applications. It works in the same way as a VM, but it's a container. So that's basically what we do. Uh, here you have a little diagram. Uh, so so this is not the way you use it to develop. But this this is how you get a private cloud uh, that ca that can be small or huge. Uh, Basically, you have a the, the horizontal bar. That's your switch, and then uh, you connect the external networks. Uh, top uh, top left, uh, you have load balancers next, and then in the bottom, the the first box with the uh, with the many gray boxes. These are your infrastructure nodes. You can get uh, many of them, and uh, each gray box inside it, it's it's a container. So that that's how you get redundancy. Th this is uh, you know production ready. Uh, next, you have the compute nodes where your instances live, and then the last two set of boxes are for storage. So you know it's a pretty standard OpenStack cloud. Uh, but of course, if you see this, and, and you're thinking, I mean, this this is as far as as it can be from DevStack, right? A single node where. So, what's the trick? When we work on OpenStack Ansible, we, um, in, for, for convenience, we work on a single node. So it, it is possible to install OpenStack Ansible in a single node. We use it for our gate and for our, our development every day. So it's uh, fully supported. We have scripts that perform the installation for you, so you don't have to worry about it. Uh, you can deploy it on a cloud server. That's what we usually do when we work on it or when I work on, uh, on OpenStack Heat. I have a, a Rackspace public cloud server, and you know I, I just put it there. The requirements are a little bit higher than for DevStack. You need 16 gigabytes and 80 uh, 16 gigabyte of RAM and 80 gigabytes of uh, disk space, and that that's for the container, uh, you know, overhead. Uh, right now we only support Ubuntu, so Ubuntu Trusty is the only platform where you can install this at this time. Hopefully that will that will change. Uh, and one nice thing that you get from containers is that even though y if, if you install it in this way, it's a single node, you, you can get redundancy. So you can install uh, you know, a load balancer. You, you, we, we install HAProxy to load balance multiple uh, instances, multiple containers of the same service. And I, I'm going to show you all this in, in a little bit. So you, you'll see how that works. So. I'm going to describe the process, the installation process, which is very simple. So hopefully, when this ends, you're all going to go running to uh, you know, start a cloud server and try it. Uh, so you, you need a, a 1404 fresh VM or cloud server. So you need to clone the project. So OpenStack slash OpenStack Ansible. We put it in uh, slash opt slash, slash OpenStack Ansible. But the choice is yours. And then you have a, a set of three scripts that you need to run. The first one, which comes with the project, is called Bootstrap AIO. This creates the, uh, the configuration files that are proper for, uh, for an all-in-one. So you don't have to worry about knowing how to configure this, uh, which you can if you want to deploy it in a different way. Uh, but, but we have a script that does it all for you. Once that script runs, you have a directory at etc OpenStack deploy where all the config files are. So you can go and make any changes before the installation occurs. So for example, w what I typically do is I go set my admin password. Any passwords that you don't set, they're randomly selected for you. So 
I mean, you, you, can, you can use a random password and then you go check the config file to see what it is. But to save time, I just set my, my password there. So once your config files are ready to go, you uh, bootstrap Ansible. That this is another script that installs Ansible and a bunch of extras and wrappers to make it simple to use. It just runs, it doesn't need any configuration. And then the most important step is to run the Ansible playbooks. So this is the last thing you do. And this, uh, using the config files, it goes and installs OpenStack. Uh, on on a public cloud server, this takes about 45 to one hour, 45 minutes to one hour, and, and you have a cloud that's ready to go uh, with all the major services installed. Uh, so I'll, I'd say one hour. One hour is a fair, uh, fair thing to say. So I suppose many of you are not familiar with LXC. So th this is a simple list of the, the most useful commands, the ones that you're using all the time. Uh, if you want to see the list of containers, lxcls, uh, dash f, it, it's like a, ls, the dash l for ls, it shows you know the, the one line, uh, one container per line, nicely formatted. If you want to log into a container, you use lxc attach and provide the container name, which you can get from the ls listing. Uh, the containers are all started, so you normally don't start a container, but that, that's the command LXC start that you use if uh, for any reason a container has been stopped, so you, you can restart it. Uh, and the D, uh, by the way, that D dash D is to start it in daemon mode, so it, it's in the background, it runs in the background. You, you still, you, you stay in your host after you start the container. And then uh, a couple of options that I, I'm going to show how to use them or a uh, use of f for them later is uh, how to stop and destroy a container. It sounds horrible, but it, it's actually quite fun. So I'm going to show you that. Uh, so you, 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 uh, if, if you need to destroy a container, you stop it first and then you destroy it. And in both cases, you provide a container name. So, okay, one more slide before the, the demo. Sorry, sorry about this. So th this is my workflow. Uh, it's not the only workflow, by the way. Uh, you know, you, you, th there's, there's other people, my colleagues, that do it differently. So if, if, if you look around, you're going to find, you know, it's not the, the only way to do this. But what I found to be the most uh, useful and convenient for me is I start by deploying one of these things. So I get it in a, in a uh, public cloud service. Once it's running, uh, say, I, th as I typically do, I want to work on heat engine, for example. So I do LXC attach to that container. So now I'm logged in that container. That container is running a stock heat engine that uh, Ansible installed for me, right? But th that's not really good for me. I, I just want to install my development version. So what I do is I stop it. And uh, this, is, uh, this is like a mini Ubuntu. So I say uh, stop heat engine, uh, I'm sorry, service heat engine stop, right? It, it's an Ubuntu, Ubuntu VM. It feels like one. So you stop it. Then I just get my version, which could be uh, from GitHub, or maybe I have my fork, doesn't matter. You just install your version. Uh, in case there are any differences between the version that Ansible installed versus your development version, you can refresh your dependencies. You can update your database. Uh, if you need to change the config files, the config files are there because Ansible installed a, a, a running version of the service. So in most cases, you, uh, you're ready to go. You don't need to touch the config files. But if, you, if you're working on something that requires uh, changes to the config file, you can make them. And then after that, you, you just run it. You, you run it manually, and you know, logs go out to the console. You just run it like a Python application. And that, that works really well for me. Uh, in a way, it matches the way things run in, uh, in DevStack, where, where you have uh, on that screen thing that you get you know, all those sessions. Uh, the, the difference is that you only get the one that matters, the one that you're working on. You, you don't have all the other stuff, right? So, so you, you get your single session, and then everything else is installed for production, unlike DevStack, where everything is installed as if you were developing. Uh, so uh, so I, I'm going to apologize. The, uh, so I have a recorded demo, and it, it, it's tiny characters. But if you go to that, uh, that URL, I recorded this, this same session. The session that you're going to see here, it's recorded. 
Uh, and you can, you can view it now along with me, or you can view it later. It, it's, it's out there. This, if you're not familiar with Askinema, this is like a YouTube for console sessions. And it, it allows you to copy paste. So it, it's really text that you see in your browser. So it's actually very useful. So if, if you want to play with this later and see what I did, it, it's all recorded. So let's see how that works. So, so th this is what I have. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry about the size. Uh, oh, sure, yes. Okay. Okay, so let's see if my magic button works. So, the first thing I did is uh, show you the container list. So, LXCLS dash fancy. <coughs> And that's that's the list of containers on on this installation. So if if you do this, you're going to get a list exactly like this one, or or very close. Uh, the container names are going to be different because they're randomly generated. But uh, other than that, you're going to get this. So these are all containers that are running in in this single host. This is a single host. It's hosted on a Rackspace public cloud uh, VM of the specs that I mentioned before: 16 gigabyte of RAM, 80 gig of disk. So you're going to notice that uh, all, all the, the usual suspects are there. You can see uh, Nova, Keystone Glance, you know, all of those. Uh, but notice that some of them are uh, redundant, right? We, we have uh, how many Keystones? We have two Keystones. We have three RabbitMQs. So a chip. Is it three? OK. <laughs> Uh, so you, you can see uh, three Galeras. So, so we have a redundant database here. We have a Galera cluster. It's all running on, on, on my little node, right? Uh, and it, it's basically, we installed it as a production service, right? As a production deployment, a production cloud. But it, it's running in a single node. So let's continue. What did I do next? Um, Yes, very important. You, enter is fully supported. <laughs> so uh, here's Alexi attach. So, so I, I picked a container. So I'm going to stop right there and tell you about this. So this is the utility container. So this is the only con if, if you if you perused that list very carefully, when you got to the last one, uh, utility container, you said, "What? What's this?" Right. So utility container is a container that we install where all the command line clients are set up for you. So when you need to, I mean, the same way you go to Horizon, which is also installed, you go to Horizon to do your GUI you know, access to OpenStack, you, you can come to the utility container to do your command line access to the cloud. So here I logged into that container with LXC attach. A couple more enters, yes. That still works. <laughs> so I'm going to source my credentials, which Ansible put them there for me. So just source OpenRC. That's ready to go. And I'm going to show you some commands, which I, I, I tested a little bit of everything. So the OpenStack command line is installed. You, you can get user list. Uh, then heat stack list, which is going to be empty because this is a fresh install. And I did one more glance, which is also empty. So this is a very new, uh, uh, very new installation. So I think clear works. I, I divided the screen now. I left, so uh, I'm, I split the screen now. So I left the utility container. It's at the top because I'm going to use it again in a little bit. And here I'm going to show you how this host is structured. So the bottom one, I'm not in the utility container. I'm in the host. So it's very useful that all the file system of the file systems of all the containers are files in the host. So you don't have to log into a container to see the files that the container sees as its root file system. So you, you, you can see here that there's a directory for each container. If you go inside that directory, there's a root FS subdirectory. Uh, inside that, you have the root file system of the container. So, <coughs> for example, if if you are a say you are a PyCharm person, you you like you know full blown IDEs. 
uh, you can install it in your host in a container it will be impractical right so you install it in your host and you uh, you can share the source code between the container and your host by going to this uh, the, the corresponding directory same thing happens with logs I'm going to show you right there that the logs are also all hosted in the uh, in the main host and they're mounted on each, each each container mounts its own logs so this is openstack slash log same thing one directory per container and here I'm, I'm doing a little demo of uh, the host of the logs I'm going to tell glance API logs so I just go to the glance there you go glance container glance api.log that's the log file now you can see me going to the uh, utility container on the top half and as a running command I can see it in the log so it, it's kind of a, a DYI of a dev stack but you, you customize it to the stuff that matters to you you don't have to get the whole thing configured this way so okay what's next I'm going to show you how to set up this box to develop on heat which is what I do most of the time as an example so I'm going to start by logging into the heat engine container Alexi attach dash n container name then as I said before I'm going to stop heat engine because that's a service that I don't care about I'm going to install my own heat engine so I stop it you probably don't believe me so I'm going to go to the top and show you that heat is dead effectively dead I mean why would you believe me right you don't know me <laughs> <laughs> but there you go it's dead see So now I'm going to clone heat from GitHub. There you go. So there's a virtual environment installed that I'm going to activate. That's where all the <coughs> sorry, all the dependencies are. In in all containers, the <coughs> virtual environments are in slash openstack slash VMs. So I activate that that one. Now here comes something that I'm gonna stop right there. I need to explain this. Uh, because OpenStack Ansible is a production deployment it does not go out to the uh, globally available PyPy to get packages uh, OpenStack Ansible sets up its own package repository so that every time you uh, install or fix an installation or change it you have consistency all the same packages are installed so th there, there's a uh, w w th there are I think there are actually two I mean if, if you go back and review the list of containers there are two containers that are repositories for uh, Python packages so when you're working uh, with a development version you may want to go out to the uh, you know the big PyPy the, the globally available one because you know as the project uh, is changing th there might be requirements that are outside of what, what was generated at the time you installed this uh, deployment so what I'm going to do is edit the pip configuration now which is in uh, all containers have it so it's configured to not go out to the cheese shop and I'm gonna tell it to do go out to the cheese shop by setting that thing from true to false this is in preparation for installing dependencies which is what I'm gonna do next so now that I enabled access to PyPy and if you don't do this it doesn't matter right if, if there's a package that it's not there you're gonna get a failure and then you oh okay I need to do this you, you can do it later so now uh, refresh all the requirements in that uh, in that container, which usually 
I mean, when you do it like I did it, where I, I install the whole thing and then this, there's not going to be much different, but there, there's one, there, there's one update there. So you know, pre pretty much ev everything else was already installed. So this is kind of boring. I think there's there's one that's going to be a little bit slow to install the, the XML one that's super slow. Yeah. So I'm just going to and uh, see if I can skip that and save some time. There you go. So when it, when it created the package server, it just created everything? Yes. Kind of like a dev pie instance and cache requirements for each of the projects? Yes. It, it calculates, uh, you know, the a consistent set. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> it, it creates a consistent set of requirements for, uh, you know, for all the projects that you install. Yes, that's correct. But now, since I'm installing a developer version, I may need to go outside of that, which for production you don't do, but for this it's okay. Okay, so I need to set uh, to sync the database in case there are new migrations. So in this, this one exercise, I was lucky. There were no migrations. <coughs> but uh, you don't know, you, you have to try it. And I, I'm going to talk a little bit about migrations later. Uh, they're, they're kind of a headache for some, I mean, for, for a reason, I'll tell you about it. So uh, database was synced, and now I can uh, install my version of Heat in the virtual environment for development. So I, I do Python setup.py develop. And for those that don't know, this installs the package, but doesn't move it to the virtual environment. It installs it in place, so you can edit the files, and th the changes are automatically pick picked up because uh, Python put a link, the same link in the virtual environment that points to the source files. So it's very con <coughs> very convenient. I'm sorry, I'm not, not sure what's going on with my throat today. I apologize. So now uh, all that's left is to run it. You, you can just go ahead and run it. it it's, it's a fully installed development package. And something that I particularly like is that when you run service this way, the logs go out to, <coughs> to the console. And of course, you still don't believe me, so I'm gonna go to the utility container <laughs> to show you that it, it's, it's working again. <coughs> there you go. So, and one more just for fun. So it's fully running, it's running out of my source code so I can start working on it and each time I can control C this, make some changes, run it again. And that's how I work. That's how I, I do all my contributions to heat. So I'm gonna stop this. And if you remember one of the things I mentioned, I, I, I removed the, uh, the top, uh, the utility container. So I mentioned that uh, with DevStack, it's an all or, all or nothing. There's no way to fix things. So I'm gonna show you what happens if, if you mess up, right? I, I, I'm very good at this, by the way. Happened many times. So the, the container that you're working on starts working erratically, and you want to fix it. So you, you can sit down and debug it, or you can just trash the container and tell ANSI will make me a new one. That, that's the very nice thing that DevStack, I mean, it will take him, take him years to support something like this, I think. So, this is when I stop a container and destroy a container, which is very exciting to do. I always love to do this. Feels like you're doing something forbidden, but you know, in the end, it's no big deal. You, you get used to it, it's, it's quite fun. So, there you go. So Alexi, stop to stop it. You have to stop it. Destroy doesn't destroy a, a running container. So you have to stop it first. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, okay, there you go, something I didn't know, thank you. And then you, you just uh, run the Ansible playbooks and because of, I'm sorry, <coughs> because of the way Ansible works, Ansible will detect that the container is missing and uh, it, will, it will just make a new one as if nothing happened. Now, if you remember, I showed you that there's a run playbooks script. So you can run that and that's gonna go through every little thing you have to do to install OpenStack. And it, you know, it's gonna say, oh, this is done, okay. Let's move to the next one. This is done too. And, and it'll keep going and it, it'll take a while just to realize that most of the things are still there. So the option that I, I used here, for some reason that run playbook script doesn't have, uh, doesn't take command line arguments, but Ansible does. And with Ansible, you can limit the scope of what you want to do. So here I, I use Ansible directly instead of through that wrapper script. And I'm going to tell it that only perform the tasks that are related to hit engine, which is quite faster. So OpenStack Ansible. And OpenStack Ansible basically imports all the config files. It's a little wrapper around the, the original Ansible. And I tell it dash L hit engine. So now it's going to start finding all the things and it's going to realize that the container is missing. It'll, it'll make a new one. And if you, let's look at this. So this is 1150 ish. So 1150. So I'm going to fast forward this. So it's, it's about two and a half minutes it took for this. And you can verify it in the, the screencast if you want, if you don't believe me. It's almost done there. There you go. It finished, it <coughs> created the container and now I'm, I'm back to normal. So I think we're running a little bit short on time so I, I'm gonna speed this up. Basically what I did here is just connect again and make sure that everything works. Okay. So uh, I, I mentioned this, so I'm going to go really fast. All the locations of things, uh, if, if you, you, you can get the slides uh, for reference. Uh, I didn't show you HAProxy, but the HAProxy is installed in the host, so you, you can, uh, you, you can uh, modify the configuration there, especially if, if you're working on one of the uh, services that are redundant. Usually you uh, disable all the ones you, you don't work on and keep them as backup. I typically do that. Uh, if I screw up, instead of going, you know, to destroy the container, I have, in the case of Keystone, I have two. I can screw up one, and then I can move to the next. Uh, so I, I mentioned the cheese shop, so I, I don't think I need to repeat that. I, I showed you in the screencast. Debuggers, if you work with command line debuggers, they, uh, they work great on the container. So uh, my favorite one is PUDB, but PDB works too. Uh, P PUDB is it's a uh, it's a GUI debugger, but uses terminal, so it, it's text mode GUI, and that that works really great. I use that all the time. Uh, if if you want to do remote debugging with PyCharm, I I told you how to get to the sources from the host, so you can install it in the host, do remote thing through SSH. That that all works too. Uh, Uh, if, if you're doing uh, Apache, so Keystone and Hor uh, Horizon, they work on Apache, so it, it takes a little bit, it, it takes a trick to make it work with a development version. The home directory needs to be set, so you have to remember to do that. Uh, database migrations, if, if you get a migration in your development version and then you need to go back, you're screwed, basically. Uh, it's not this project's fault, it happens with DevStack or with everything else, uh, and I, I I mean, I don't understand why people thought it was a good idea to not support downgrades. It's a horrible idea, I think. Uh, so basically, uh, the nice thing about Ansible is that the option is you can delete the database and then run Ansible again, and it'll make a brand new database for you. Empty, yes, yeah, of course. Th that's why I'm so pissed. I, I, I mean, I, I want downgrades. I always create my downgrades on my projects. Uh, so uh, you can back it up, of course. It's a pain in the butt. 
Uh, Galera is tricky to restart, so nothing to do with this project, but something you need to be aware of. I work on a, uh, on a public cloud server, so for me, it never goes down, but if, if you're using a VM, every time you bring it back, you have to, for the first node, uh, you, you have to take, it, it's documented, you have to run it in a little different way, just so that the cluster starts. Uh, so the pros of uh, this, no dependency headaches. So dependency problems is a thing of the past for me. Uh, it's very easy to modify things. So I, I create one one of these and it lasts for a very, very long time. I can keep it going. I, I don't have to go make a new one very often like I used to with DevStack. And it's really closer to the real thing because it's a production deployment except for where you put your development version. Uh, the cons is that this is a new project. It's young. It only supports the core services at this time. Uh, so, I mean, any of you that, I mean, if, if you work on a project that's not in that list and you want to write Ansible playbooks for it, we will welcome you with open arms. So keep the contributions uh, coming. And, and then for Neutron guys, any Neutron developers here? No. Yes. Okay. So. It, the, the way we deploy Neutron is very opinionated. We use Linux Bridge. So I suspect it's not very useful for development. You, you have to do a lot of manual work to configure whatever you want if, if it's not this. So I, I don't see it as a usable for, and so useful for, for Neutron. So as I said, we, uh, we would like to take contributions. We, uh, we, we want to grow this project. Uh, we are on OpenStack Ansible on Freenode. And that's all I have. Uh, there, there's a blog post ab about this same talk, but it, it, a blog post version of this talk, if you want to read it uh, later, that, that's the URL. And that's it. Question. I'm supposed to give you the mic, I think. And it's probably off. It's on now. Um, about um, OpenStack Ansible by itself, is is this just a, a set of playbooks to set up a development environment, or could it be used for setting up production environments as well? Uh, you, you mean the OpenStack Ansible command that I used? No, that, that's using production. All right. it's basically, it, it's a wrapper around Ansible that just uh, imports all the uh, YAML files that, that you have in the ETC op OpenStack deploy. This is the place where the config files are. So you don't have to, uh, I mean, you, you can run Ansible normally, but you have to include all these uh, variable files by hand. So th this uh, script does it for you. It, it's very simple, actually. When it's contributed, I guess? I don't know. <laughs> but we, we would like to. We would really like to support uh, Red Hat. Would you uh, be able to say how it differs from Cola? Are they similar? Uh, Cola is based on Docker. I, I'm, not, I'm not familiar at all with Cola. I, I, I know it's, it's Docker-based. So uh, we find LXC much more flexible. Uh, LXC, basically, you create VMs. They, they feel and act like a VM. So you're not restricted to deploy single applications per container. You really get a, an Ubuntu machine in each container, so we find it more flexible. But I, I'm not familiar with color, so. So this is a single node. For development, this, this is the, the, playbook is like the, the, the playbook supports, yeah, up to thousands, if you want, yes. It, it's a production deployment. We, we deploy it for our customers, too. One more. I'm oh, sorry, it's off. Here is the question. Uh, when I use DevStack, I always need, for my purpose, to disable force config drive on NOAA conf. And this is a headache for me. How, with your project, I can optimize uh, it or minimize my uh, I, specific I actions? For I this. don't remember specifically if we have a configuration option for config drive. Okay, that guy says yes, and he knows. 
Yes, you, you can disable. So af after you uh, bootstrap Ansible, that first step, you can go in the config files, disable it, and then when, when you run the playbooks, it, it, it'll start disabled, yes. So these two guys are experts, by the way. I, I'm just a developer, but they know. So <laughs> one more. Uh, you mentioned that you contribute back to Heat yes. and the gates in DevStack. At the gate? Yeah. So I can reform. Oh, you, uh, oh, so you, you mean you that the gate is DevStack? Yeah, so the problem is that when you do this stuff as you do, uh, you are running not the latest masters of all the other stuff. And so there are uh, maybe, I mean, it's still useful, but probably something to, I to be aware okay. of. That it, that, the, that's a good the point. The gate might uh, so not accept your change because, I mean, something yes. changed. So outside to be honest, to I, I guess it depends the kind of work that you yes, do. Sure, yes, sure. Uh, for the things that I've done, that, mm -hmm. that was not a problem for me. Uh, I run you know, the unit tests in mm -hmm. the container. And you know, and and then you know, pray and send it, <laughs> and yeah, yeah, yeah. It, sure. it's been good to me. Yeah. So probably when you uh, making a new resources or stuff like that on heat, then when some API of Nova change or mm -hmm. API of Cinder change, you move to Cinder. Well, too so and stuff like the that. config files in the uh, in, in the etc directory that I showed, you can change what version of any project you want to install. And you, you can upgrade any project, so you, you don't have to, you know, you make a new you, one. You don't have to. You don't have to upgrade all the ones. You no, can you, you just upgrade change all the, all it, the run it, and mm. yeah, it, it'll and it pick up the changes. And it will be much faster than uh, upgrading everything. It, it's like minutes, yeah, L like I showed, and two and a half minutes, yeah. So it's you, you can still uh, yeah, sure. make it work, I think. Thanks. Yep. Yeah, we have to go. Thank you. Thank you.